Okay, <clears throat> so today I am stringing a Pro Kenex 175. I don't even know what this is called anymore. These are all the same frames. Kinetic, crowning moment, I don't know. Something M175. Um, but it's the exact same frame pattern and pretty much the same frame that Pro Kenex has been using for at, probably at least five years now. And as opposed to the E-Force that I did yesterday, this is a two-piece stringing. So I've already pre-cut two pieces of string, um, one at 20, 20 feet long for the mains and one at 18 feet long for the crosses. And one nice thing about the two-piece stringing is it's symmetrical. So all you really need to remember are the, are the two lengths. And you don't need to remember like a short side because both halves of the racket um, are the same. There we go. So um, I'm going to start at the, the top grommet and I'm just going to pull the string down symmetrically on uh, head right, uh, one head right and one head left. The, the one thing I notice is that there's two grommets broken off here. Um, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but um, there's one head left is broken here and three head left is broken here. So I'm going to try and use some of this plastic tubing, which you can buy like this, to reinforce the string in those grommets so that the string doesn't rub against the frame um, and break as easy. So what I like to do is put each end in a starting clamp and this is where two starting clamps is handy. And I like to stretch it way out, really nice and thin. It's gonna make it easier to fit through a tighter space. And then I clip this into shorter lengths that will hopefully fit through those grommet holes and uh, help support the string. So let's try this. Um, I feed the string through this now small tube that I've made and that's about as tight as it's gonna get, which is good. Maybe, maybe I even did it too tight this time, but let's see if I can even fit it through the hole. Because if I can't, this is a moot point, I suppose. able to get the string through. Now, in order to do this, this is where you might need an awl, which I have here. And I have a thicker awl and a thinner awl to uh, widen out the grommet hole a little bit so that hopefully I can fit this tube through. Okay, Kind of, it's bunching up a little bit, so I'm going to widen up the other side and try not to poke myself. Just to make a little bit of room for this tube, Let's see if I can get this. Not quite, I bunched it up, I'm going to try it again. Okay, so I did a little cut there, um, just as I was trying to fit the tube through the through the hole, which I have done now. And so now I just got to start feeding the string all the way through. And once I get that, I should be able to pull it. So now I have just this little length of tube, and it's as thin as I could get this tube hole. It will still fit around the string, as you can see. But now. I can feed the other main down through the first hole in the handle. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to pull these lengths of string equally. And this, again, this is the nice thing about two piece stringing, or yeah, two piece stringing is that. Um, there's nothing to measure. I just pull everything equally through. One head left and one head right. Okay. And it's a little bit inconvenient to have to, you know, put this tube in, but it will just help prevent breakages in the future. And um, customers don't really even notice it, but 
believe me, they're better off with it. So basically I've just rebuilt a little bit of grommet there to protect the string from rubbing directly on the frame um, at the mainstream, at the primary mainstream actually. Um, so you have about a quarter inch of tube poking through there and now I can actually start to string the racket. Okay, so just like on the other frame, I like to start with a starting clamp on the outside of the frame and double pull at the bottom for the first main. Same reason as before, which is um, not, pulling un not pulling on a clamp uh, untensioned string. So um, this is a little bit of a weird first pull, but what I like to do is pull like this, clamp here, and now this is all tensioned in the frame. And then this is kind of a tricky tricky spot because I, I can't pull this one just yet because the clamp won't fit next to the other clamp. So I'm actually going to do one more main on this left side. And I believe these are symmetrical here. So I'm going up to two head left. And I'm going to pull here. Very easy racket to string. Much more similar to like a, like a tennis racket setup because you're not competing with as much of a fan pattern here and it's a two-piece. The only problem with the two-piece is you have to um, do four knots instead of two and some people don't like doing knots, but I'm, I've gotten used to it. So now I'm going to pull on this clamp and this is a little bit of an awkward pull because I want to remove this clamp before the string and, and clamp rub against the frame. So it's not perfect, but at least I kept everything tensioned and I can even give this a little push just to pull out some of that slack like I did on the E-Force. Right? So now I don't need to pull tension at the base um, anymore until my tie off. Right. Okay, so now I just need to match what I did on the left side on the right. And it's a little tight with this clamp in here, there we go. And this grommet, this grommet's gonna break off too at some point. Looks like these, these grommets are kind of brittle. I'm gonna leave it on there, but I suspect this grommet is gonna break next time as well. I'm not gonna intentionally break it off because I'm not 100% sure when, but it seems like these grommets are definitely breaking quickly. Now I can double pull on this racket because there's a lot less friction than there was on the E-Force. And um, I was double pulling on the E-Force, but I don't need to necessarily put, uh, pull down on the string in between every pull. So it's a little bit easier in that regard too. Now I can string um, two mains ahead here and then come back to the left side. So go down, up. So that's, I mean, it's one to one, two to two, three to three, four to four, all four holes, all the first four holes in the throat line up with the ones in the head, so this is easy. It's been so long since I strung one of these rackets, uh, at least two years probably, but it's pretty easy to remember. Now this hole right here is also missing a grommet, so I'm gonna try to take another length of this tube and do the same thing again, which is a little bit of a pain, but let's, let's try it. Let's try and head off some of the breakage issues here as well. And I pulled this tube so thin that it's actually hard to, um, it's actually hard to pull the string through. So once again, I'm gonna use the awl here. And be careful not to poke yourself because it's a little, it's a little dangerous aiming one at your chest. We're almost through. Okay, so that's through, and we just need to get the 
end of the string through. And this seems like this is going to be the hardest part of stringing this racket today, but we're almost there. And again, just pulling through enough string that we can now um, hold this tube back. And I'm using about an inch of tube here. Sometimes you can use more if you need to cover two grommets that are next to each other. But you want to make sure that part of it stays above the frame and actually bends um, at the curve of the string because that's what holds it in place. So now I've got another quarter inch of protection built out there. And again, the holes line up nicely here so there's not a lot of instruction. You're just zigzagging up the frame so far. Um, today I'm using Python Atlas 17, which I think is pretty much the same thing as um, Ectalon Premier Power. Now at the fifth, uh, one, two, three, four, at the fifth hole, I go back down through the third hole again. Um, and now the, the fourth hole, throw, throw it right, and you share the fourth hole. And then you, then you come up to the fifth hole in the throat. Sorry, throat left is what I meant. And now, right back up. So, yeah, there's one shared hole down at the bottom. And when I do that, what I want, the one trick on this racket is I want to be careful that because I'm sharing a hole, I don't want these strings to cross right here. So as I pull tension, before I actually clamp, I'm going to be careful that these strings don't overlap in the sharing hole. Because sometimes they get crossed. If you if they don't come through just right and you want to re-pull so like in this case they actually look like they are wanting to cross and when they do that you have to um, put put this string back through that hole at a different angle um, to, or, or push to try and make sure that um, this is coming above or below the other string such that it doesn't cross when you pull tension on it so in this case what I'm going to do is come in from the bottom and try to push it through that way. Just to avoid that crossing. And I've done this before. I've completed the racket and realized, um, realized that it was crossed. Sometimes the Pathfinder all could help here too. So that you can come in from this side and pick your angle. Not quite. There we go. There we go. All right, so that's the that that's the common trick on this racket. Usually you don't have broken grommets all the time, but you do want to make sure you don't twist um, twist your strings when you pull tension here. So hopefully, coming in from the other angle. Helps. Let's see. Let's see here, and I'm gonna hold it with my finger to try and help guide it. Yep. Perfect. So now these are not crossed; they're parallel the whole way. Yeah, I feel like this um, this Atlas 17 string from Python is. Racket World's answer to Premier Power when Ectalon went out of business or whatever for a while before. There was like a year or two where Ectalon, I just, they, were, they weren't producing anything. I think they were actually like bought out by Racket World or uh, Racket Ball Warehouse. But I think my guess is that the Premier Power is like a generic, you know, formula or whatever that was bought and made under a different name because this feels a lot like Premier Power. And these ones didn't cross, so that's perfect. Let's try. Okay. 
So now this is the last two, um, two mains, and what's great is you don't have to skip any holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven will be my last string, and you'll actually tie off at the bottom. So you, sh you share the fifth grommet on the bottom, going back downwards. So again, this is where you need to be careful not to overlap with, again, since you're sharing a, sharing a hole. Um, but you're going to pull here downward and then tie off at the bottom. So, and make, again, make sure these are nice and clean and not overlapping, looks good. And this is a little bit of a weird clamp because these strings are so close down here at the bottom. You kind of have to spread them apart a little bit. It's not ideal, but it's not really any other way to do it. You could pull a few extra pounds of tension here if you want, just to account for that. Um, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it this time. Now you're gonna tie off a three, a three hole, right? Three throat, right? And I do try and, again, not overlap strings on the outside of the frame either, but it doesn't really matter on the throat because you're not gonna be rubbing that against the wall, so you're not gonna get string breakage. It just looks cleaner not to have them overlap. Again, I'm using a Parnell knot here, um, which is nice and strong and easy to tie, fairly compact, looks good, and tightens up against itself. So that's that's the knot I'm always I'm always tying wherever possible. So that's good. And the hardest part here really was just building those grommets out of the tubes. Okay, so that's that side done, and then I gotta do one more main pull on this side. Same thing. It's the seventh head left, back down into five, throat left. Uh, let's see if I can get this pushed through. I do like using my needle nose pliers, but outside of my clippers, and my like my diagonal cutters, which are these, and my two um, starting clamps, my needle nose pliers are definitely my next most used. I don't use the awls that much. Um, I do use a clothespin on Speedport rackets, um, like Ectalon rackets, so that I don't have to use my brake. And I I don't know if I've done that in another video, but. I do have clothes pins here that I sometimes use, but these are my, um, these clippers and these needle nose pliers as well as the starting clamps are definitely my primary tools. And this is crossed here, so I don't like that. So I'm going to try again going in from a different angle. This is coming in underneath the existing string, so I'm going to try and you can use my Pathfinder all, see if it's any faster, and try and come in from above the other string. Let's see if this will help. This is a little bit of a weird angle, but again, it is helpful. And uh, sometimes a regular awl can help here too, just by making a little bit of room next to the existing string. Um, can make like a little bit of a friendlier path for the, for the string to follow out. Let's see, not quite. Okay, back to the Pathfinder. Yep. I don't like using this, but sometimes it really does help. I think now it's close to on top. Let's try it. I'm going to guide it with my hand as I pull. Try and help it stay on top. And it looks like it is okay.
tie off. Tying off at three throat left now. Again, the third third throat hole. Okay. Always like to use my starting clamp for extra traction. Cinch that down. Before I cinch it too tight. Nope. I really want this to uh, to move, but I don't want to poke it. Come on. Nope. It's gonna be crossed. This is just not sitting as pretty as I wanted naturally, but that's gonna have to be okay. It's not a great way to, to fix that here, and it, it's not ideal, but it's totally fine. Okay, so now mains are done. This can come off. Oops. Was this? Was this not clamped? You know, this feels clamped. Okay. And now, for the crosses, we start here at six, and we're gonna do a tie off. I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 18. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do it. Uh, I'm gonna start here, but I'm gonna work backwards so I don't have to feed as much through. And I usually do a hard weave to start, so I go. Um, in this case, this this string's sitting a little bit lower than this string, so I'm going under this. Just a hard weave. Doesn't really matter, but that's just how I do it for consistency. So I start it like this, and I make sure I have enough string here to do a tie off and then I starting clamp it. This is how I do it without having to pull against a starting knot. So I don't think that's ideal. It's easier maybe for some people, but I think it's a little messier. And I'll show you in just a second how I count for this. Yeah, this is a pretty easy racket to string. Couple, couple things down here where you make sure that things don't cross, but... Um, and then the grommets, of course, that were broken here, but... Otherwise, the pattern is very, very straightforward on this. One of the easiest patterns, definitely. And again, of course, making sure I'm alternating here. This is a nice new racket, so these uh, these grommets are still very flush against the string because they haven't stretched out too much. This is like brand new. So now I'm double pulling the first two. Um, that doesn't feel tight. I'm gonna tighten this up. There we go. Um, like that. Now, I'm going to string the fourth one, or weave the fourth. And, again, when I did that, I made sure that the two rackets, or the two uh, strings that are parallel, sharing the same grommets, are not crossed out here as well. So nice and clean. And now, I'll string the fourth across, and I'll come back, tension the third, and then I'll come back and address the start knot. After the third main is when I usually come back. Okay. Because I want the clamp to be out of the way on this, on this side away from the starting clamp. So now I can pull against this clamp, and notice I didn't have to pull directly against uh, 
a knot, right? So now I do this, and I can now clamp here, and I uh, tie off at five head right. And I have plenty of room here for a Parnell knot again. And again, this is just like tying off a main now. You don't need a special starting knot. You just use the same knot you've been using the whole time, which is a Parnell knot. Um, but you do need a starting clamp in order to do that, which is really the purpose, the real purpose of a starting clamp is um, what I just used it for. But I tend to use both starting clamps on every single racket I string in one way or another, so um, I find them to be probably the single most useful tool while I string. Alright, so the knot is now done. And I can just finish doing the crosses. Which is kind of the boring part, but walk through it together. Um, the rest is much faster. It's very straightforward now. Nothing nothing exceptional at all. I'm just going to zigzag and ultimately tie the finishing knot this at the uh, I guess this is like the eighth hole from the bottom. Let's see how quick we can work through this part. Maybe not as much to explain at this point. I mentioned on my other video that some people do a like a skip between mains and then come back in order to tie the pieces of the grommets together. But I mentioned in that in that other video, that uh, sector five video, that I don't bother doing it because I don't see it as a problem. And a lot of grommets um, have a little thing built in that sort of helps prevent them from peeling up right here at this point. So to me, that just adds uh, extra work to streaming. Also, I, you know, might notice I tend to push these up a lot of the time before I pull tension, and that's because tension tends to pull the string back down. So if you start with it level, oftentimes the string bows more, or um, it's more of a U-shape than going straight across. And whereas if you start up too high, it tends to level out. So if you see I'm starting above um, flat there, and then when I pull straight, you can see it, it straightens out. But if I start here, it kind of often will bow out downward beyond that point, which is too low. So this is uh, helping me so I don't have to straighten the strings as much at the very end. Um, there's very little like, adjustment I need to do. So we have about seven more of these, and we'll tie off. But they go pretty quick once you're used to it. It's just a little bit monotonous, on especially on these rackets that are very straightforward all the way down. 
Some of them have a little bit of a weirder pattern as you're um, crossing over with more mains and that type of thing, but this one is about as easy as it gets. Um, o ports on an Ectalon racket or the grommet, like the hidden grommets, the in-frame grommets that don't um, that don't show that where the string doesn't show on the outer side of the racket at all on some of those head rackets is a huge pain because there's like a special way you have to string those crosses and it's very unpleasant. I don't. I would I would never design a racket that way because although it looks cool, there's no functional advantage and it just makes it harder to string. I guess they don't build a racket based on the convenience of restringing, but. I guess I wish they did since I restring for some people. Would be nice not to have to do O ports. And we got two more minutes left. I'm gonna try and hurry so I don't have to cut. I don't know if I'm going to make it, but we're going to try. I don't think I'm going to make it in two minutes. So rather than cut the video together, I will just explain that I'm just going to go all the way down and at the very end, when I cut over, I, uh, I take the end tail that's gonna come out here and I go up to this grommet and tie off right here, again with a Parnell knot. So um, I think I'm just gonna wrap up here so I don't have to splice together the video. I can just upload it as is um, and let this cut off in one minute. But let's, let's see, let's see how close I can come here. I have three more mains to thread. I don't think I can do that in, uh, in a minute, unfortunately. I talked too much. It was the grommet's fault. It was the, it was the crossover strings in the throat's fault. It definitely wasn't my fault. All right, 45 seconds. Come on, we got this. If it cuts off, you'll know what happened. But at least I already gave you the instruction. If this were the last one, I'd have just enough time, but I don't think so. Pull. Oh, buddy. All right, 15 seconds and I have to string one more across. So again, I'm gonna string one more cross here and I'm gonna tie